Stand with us for the reading of the Word of God in John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my bearing has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you. But me, you have not always. I want to preach to you this morning on the fragrance of Christ. Father, we thank you and praise you for the privilege that we have being together again. We thank you for the uh, presentation this morning by Brother Joel. We pray your blessings on him. We thank you, Lord, for the offering and pray your blessings upon those who have given to the cause of Jesus. And we thank you for your word this morning. We ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost and pray that you would speak to the hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you about the fragrance of Jesus Christ. We live in an hour of increasing hostility toward our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if there's ever been a time that we need to stand up and be a witness to the goodness of the Lord, it is now. To the world, the name of Jesus is an offense. We have lawsuits right here in this state, the state of Virginia, to stop the name of Jesus from being used in public settings. But to us that believe, He is precious. The Song of Solomon says, Thy name is as ointment poured forth. And now is the time that you and I, as the people of God, must demonstrate to the world the true beauty of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There is a fragrance about Jesus Christ. In my text, Jesus has just entered the little town of Bethany, about two miles outside of Jerusalem, where his friends Mary and Martha and Lazarus live, and he's on his way to Jerusalem now to die. It's the time of the Passover feast. Crowds are already gathering into Jerusalem, preparing for the Passover all over Israel and surrounding countries, gathering in for the festival. And the authorities in Jerusalem have issued an alert for Christ. They have asked that anybody that sees him report him. They intend to arrest him if he shows up for that feast. And Jesus is aware of the fact that they are intending to arrest him. And he knows that his hour is at hand. So with his cross looming just ahead, Jesus is invited to a meal at a man's house called Simon the leper. Now you understand he's not a leper now. He has been a leper. But if he's a leper now, no one could be at his table. In fact, he'd be an outcast from society. He had been a leper, but he's not a leper any longer. And of course we know that probably the reason he's not a leper any longer is that Jesus has healed him of his leprosy. And now then he's invited Jesus to come to his home and share a meal in his home along with his disciples and his friends Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Martha's involved in serving the meal. We've seen her there before. And... 
Simon and Lazarus are sitting around the table enjoying fellowship with Jesus. Uh, Both of them have been partakers of the bounty and blessing of the Lord Jesus. Simon's been healed of leprosy. He's alive today or that day because, no doubt, Jesus healed him. And there is Lazarus who just recently was brought back from the dead by the voice and command of Jesus Christ when he stood at the grave of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. And so now Jesus is sitting at the table surrounded by friends that love him. But soon, he will be surrounded by crowds that are calling for his death. Right now, he's comforted, but he will soon be crucified. And this moment is a moment of comfort for Jesus, surrounded by friends who are thankful for what he means to them and for what he has done for them. And in the midst of that meal, Mary performs a deed of love on Jesus. This is that same Mary that earlier had sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his words. And now she takes a flask of perfume and she breaks the seal and she pours that ointment on the head and on the feet of Jesus and wipes his feet with the hairs of her head. It was a timely act of devotion by this woman. She poured the ointment on his head, but his enemies will soon pierce his head with a crown of thorns. She poured the ointment on his feet, but his enemies will soon drive nails through his feet on the cross. So... At this hour, Jesus is facing the crucifixion. It's clear to him that somebody loves him. And somebody is grateful for what he has done for her and for her family. She was grateful that her brother is sitting at that table raised from the dead by the power of Jesus. She was grateful for the truth he had taught her because she had sat at his feet and listened to the voice of the Son of God. And she's grateful for the truth he has taught her. Grateful for the change this man has made in her life. And grateful for bringing her brother Lazarus back to life. My, she sat at that table and looked around at that crowd at that table. She could see the individuals that Jesus had made a dramatic change in their life. Do you ever think of that? When you're sitting around the table and looking into the faces of the people that sit at the table with you. Do you ever think about what Jesus has meant to that individual sitting at the table with you? What would they be if it had not been for Jesus? Where would they be if it had not been for Jesus? Do we ever think while we're sitting at the table what Jesus means to those people sitting at the table with us? This woman was grateful, poured out this perfume on Jesus Christ. She knew what he was facing in Jerusalem. But she was bringing comfort to him ahead of his cross. I'm telling you, Jesus was deeply moved by this woman's devotion. And he declared that this story is going to be told all over the world, wherever this gospel will be preached. This woman would be an example of people in succeeding generations all over the world of undying love and loyalty to Jesus Christ, she would be an example all over the world. Mary's deed focused the attention on Jesus Christ. Her gift to him was not insignificant. It was costly. It wasn't just a sampling of perfume. It was... uh, 
a pound of spikenard, very costly. It was about a half a pint of perfume that she poured on Jesus that day. Brother, that perfume filled that house. It radiated from Jesus. There was a fragrance fill that place because she had poured out on Jesus this perfume, this spikenard. A sweet fragrance marked the presence of Jesus Christ. Hey, I'll tell you, when he left this place and walked down the street, everybody he walked by smelled a sweet fragrance as Jesus passed by. Oh, my. Oh, my. I want to join Mary this morning in calling attention to the gracious person of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you this morning, the world is a better place because Jesus visited us on earth. And He left behind Him a sweet fragrance in this world. This world is a better place because Jesus Christ has been here. Jesus raised the status of women in society. In the kingdom of God, there's neither male nor female. We're all one in Christ. The benefits of Calvary were made available equally to men and women. That doesn't mean that God changed the roles of men and women. But He made available to us, oh yeah, both men and women. The benefits and blessings of Calvary. It wasn't just men in that upper room. You know, Brother Joel told us about Africa, that the the men are esteemed and they're thought, and that's the way it should be. But there weren't just men in that upper room. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. There were women in that upper room. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And, and the prophet said, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the benefits of Calvary were made available equally to men and women. Women were given a place of service in the church. Not leadership in the church, but they were given a place of service in the church to exercise their gifts in building up the body of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that Jesus raised the status of women in this world. In ancient societies, the woman was the property of her husband. The Jew thanked God every morning that God did not make him a slave, a Gentile, or a woman. She could be divorced by her husband on whim. She was often abused, sometimes even killed by her husband without consequences to the man. Dr. D. James Kennedy, he died. He, he, he was pastor of a church, Coal Ridge Presbyterian Church in, in Florida. Many of you probably heard him on the radio. And he said that once when he was in the Middle East... He saw four men in the Middle East playing checkers on the porch while another man plowed a field with two animals yoked together. One of the animals was an ox. But Dr. Kennedy was shocked when the team turned the corner and he realized the other animal was a woman. You know, a society without Christ often devalues the worth of a woman. Did you hear me? I said a society without Christ devalues the worth of a woman. These women livers going around this country fighting against Jesus Christ don't know what they're doing. I said they don't know what they're doing. Jesus Christ brought a new status to women In this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
He commanded the men. He taught husbands to love their wives. To love them as Christ loved the church. He taught men to be benevolent toward their wives. He said, if you mistreat your wife, I'm not going to listen to your prayers. Is that right? Your prayers will be hindered according to how you treat your wife. You don't treat your wife right. God said, I'm not going to listen to your prayers. He taught us to be self-sacrificing toward our wives. Christ left a sweet-smelling fragrance in elevating the status of women in this world. Women, any amens out there? (laughs) Jesus not only demonstrated the value of a woman, but he demonstrated the value of a child. You remember the disciples, they brought, the women brought their children to Jesus and the disciples are going to send them away. Jesus don't have time for these children. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. He set a child on his knee and told his disciples, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, become like this little child. He said, it would be better for a millstone to be hanged about your neck and to be thrown into the ocean than that you should offend one of these little ones. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, Jesus raised the status of children. In the Roman Empire, abortion and infanticide were rampant. But when Christ came, within a few generations, hear me now, within a few generations after Christ, abortion... And infanticide had practically ceased in the Roman Empire due to the influence of Jesus Christ. The Christians, the Christians sought to save abandoned children. Children left to starve. Children left to be devoured by wild animals. Because their parents either didn't want them or couldn't afford them. Or because they were a girl and not very valuable. The Christians picked them up. They saved them from perverts who prowled to pick up abandoned children. Y'all hearing me? Are y'all listening to me this morning? I'm telling you about the fragrance of Jesus Christ. The Christians established orphanages. Nursery homes to save these abandoned children and train them in the Christian faith. They saved their souls as well as their life. You see, in the world of children, Christ has spread a sweet fragrance. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus loves The little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. All are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Hallelujah. Little Fred was so precious last Sunday. We brought him up here. Sister Ann brought him up here to pray for him. I said, little Freddie, do you believe Jesus can heal you? Yes, he shook his head. Yes, he, he believed Jesus could heal him. So we're going to pray for you, Jesus, to heal you. And we prayed for little Freddie, and he kept trying to stretch that leg out, and he got it straighter than he had it in a long time. And I was up there yesterday, and he showed me, he said, Look here, he straightened that thing completely out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! I tell you what, Jesus loves little Freddie. And he loves all these children. And Jesus left a sweet fragrance in this world and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Brother and sister, we are living in a nation that's forgetting God. And the revival of paganism in this country is demonstrated... In the militant pr- promotion and defense of abortion in this land. 
I'm telling you that we are losing the fragrance of Jesus Christ, turning from Him that has blessed us, and now turning against the values He taught us. My God, have mercy on us. We must turn back to the Bible and to Jesus and realize the value of the life He gives. Even in a child. Jesus brought purity to a pornographic world. The ancient world, Greece and Rome, was infected by moral degradation. There was a fixation on the body, on the lust of the flesh. Adultery was common. Fornication, homosexuality thrived in all stratas of society. One emperor's wife would go out at night and spend her nights as a prostitute in the city. Roman emperors would roam the streets of Rome, picking up girls and boys. Young boys and girls were abused, and families dissolved. And brought down mighty nations because the family is the bedrock of any nation. And the judgment of God wiped out whole societies that refused to turn from their moral impurity. You've you've read, you young folks have read, no doubt, in history about the city of Pompeii and the Roman Empire. The city of Pompeii was, was one of the most vile cities in the ancient world. The homes in that city were adorned with sexual symbols. Someone wrote a historical novel about the last days of Pompeii. And they make a statement about the moral condition of that city. Describe a girl by the name of our own. He makes this remark about her. I own had one vice. She is chaste. On August 24th, 79 AD, God visited judgment on Pompeii. Suddenly, it was utterly destroyed in a volcanic eruption. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ came and brought us a better way to live. He taught us the importance of purity. Do you hear me? I said Jesus taught us the importance of purity. It's absolutely essential to the family. It's essential to the health of a nation. Jesus taught us a better way to live. He cast out the demons of uncleanness. He condemned not only the act of adultery, but he condemned the attitude that leads to the act. If a man look on a woman to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus didn't just condemn people that go out and get somebody else's wife or husband. He condemned those that are gazing on somebody else's husband or wife. Ah, Jesus changed this world. Wherever He was allowed to rule and reign, Jesus changed this world. He brought about happy homes where mother and father love one another and remain faithful to one another till death do us part. Ah, oh, Jesus made a difference in our families. He left behind a sweet fragrance in the homes of those people who know Him and serve Him. Are y'all still with me now? I'm talking about the fragrance of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere he went from there on, then on. Sweet fragrance. Jesus carried with him. I want to tell you something else now. It wasn't just Jesus carrying that fragrance. 
But Mary had wiped his feet with the hairs of her head. And here comes Jesus. And later on, here comes Mary. Well, same fragrance is on her that was on him. And really, isn't that the way it's supposed to be in our life? That the same fragrance that's on him is supposed to be on us. So that the world says, they remind me of Jesus. Best of all, Jesus brought us grace so that we could start over when we'd messed up in life. When sin had wrecked our lives. The Bible tells us that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Forgiveness of sin, deliverance over sin came through Jesus Christ. The story is told of a U.S. bombardier, a man <clears throat> who flew bombing missions over Japan. And he was shot down over Japan, World War II. He was imprisoned in a five-foot cell and tortured day by day by his Japanese captors. He grew to hate them. I mean, as day by day he was tormented by them. There was a mountain of hatred built up in his heart. He was consumed by the desire for revenge. One day, somebody smuggled a Bible into that prison, passed it around among the prisoners. It got into his hands. He started reading that Bible with great interest. He came across the words of Jesus as he hung on the cross. Father... Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Something happened on the inside of that man as he read the words of Jesus, believed on Jesus, and the love of God melted that mountain of hatred in him and filled him with joy. And while in that prison cell, he said, My heart was so full of joy. I wouldn't have traded places with anyone. The guards noticed a change in him. They started treating him different because they noticed a change in his attitude. After the war, that soldier came home to the United States of America, felt the call of God to go back to Japan and be a missionary to the Japanese people. He went back to Japan and preach the gospel to the Japanese people. Somebody took his story and eventually printed it in a tract. And one day, a Japanese man, disheartened, depressed, broken and hopeless, got a hold of that tract and read it. And as a result of reading that tract, he sought out some missionaries and they led him to the Lord. This man was the naval officer that spearheaded the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Captain Fuchida. He began to preach the gospel all over Japan and the United States of America. On the 25th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, Captain Fuchida returned to Pearl Harbor with a gift for the survivors of the Pearl Harbor attack, a Bible. And inscribed on that Bible were Christ's words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Captain Fuchida stood before those survivors and humbly asked their forgiveness for his role. In what had happened at Pearl Harbor. Jesus had changed that man's life. And brought a sweet fragrance into that life. I don't know the condition of everybody in this place this morning. But I'm telling you it makes a difference when Jesus passes by. And brings that sweet fragrance with Him. And changes our life. In the place of the stench of sin. 
Jesus offers the fresh fragrance of forgiveness and grace and mercy. Everybody can start over again because Jesus brought a fresh fragrance into this world. The poet said it like this. I wish there was some wonderful place called the land of beginning again. Where all our mistakes and all our heartaches and all of our poor selfish grief could be dropped like a shabby coat at the door and never put on again. There is a place. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. You can bring that old coat and take it off and never put it on again. Hallelujah. Oh, I haven't done it justice, but I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the most precious person that's ever lived. And we are better off because Jesus visited us on this earth. And we are to give glory and honor to Him and pour out on Him. The fragrance should let the world know how wonderful Jesus really is. I want Sister Judy to come to the piano this morning. And there may be somebody here in this service this morning that Jesus has not meant much to you. You've just sort of left him on the sidelines of life. You knew about him. You knew, you heard others brag about him. You heard others tell how wonderful he is, but you've never experienced in your own heart and soul. How wonderful Jesus really is. But he's passing by your way this morning. Oh, thank God. If you'll just look up, reach out, touch him as he passes by. Jesus can heal your soul, heal your heart, change your life, and bring about a sweet fragrance in your heart and life this morning. Oh, what a difference Jesus makes. I know y'all probably get tired of hearing me say it. But I look back over and over again to that long ago day that Jesus took my grandmother from a broken heart to an altar of salvation and saved her soul. She prayed my grandfather into the kingdom of God as he resisted kicking and struggling But God got a hold to him and brought him to an altar of repentance and saved his soul and made a wholeness preacher out of him. And I keep looking back to that day. God brought my daddy out of the gambling joint and out of the beer hall and brought him to an old-fashioned altar and saved his soul. Made him a soul winner. You may get tired of me telling about it, but I don't get tired of thinking about it. Oh, no. I think about it many, many times. What Jesus has done for my family. What He did for me when I was lost, downhearted and depressed. In bondage to sin. And Jesus showed me a better way. Save my soul. And He'll do it for you. Young folks, He'll do it for you. It's amazing. You know, I was 13 years old and in my life already I was experiencing sin. Already in danger. Not knowing what the future held. Knowing I was being pulled in the wrong direction. Headed down the wrong road. And Jesus rescued me just in time. Some of you young folks right here, if you don't get in the altar, you'll be going out the door in a few days and headed into a world that you cannot predict where you'll wind up. And it's either the altar or it's disaster. I want us to stand together this morning. Jesus can bring a change in your heart.